gemacht. Hello everyone and welcome back to another episode here on my Minecraft Survival Let's Play World. We're back where we finished off in the previous episode, building this beautiful build over here. And this is actually the town bakery for a brand new settlement that we're creating in this landscape over here, which I announced in the previous episode. And if you guys haven't already checked that episode out, go ahead and do it so that you guys get up to date with what we're doing over here. But in the previous episode, we built this bakery which I think looks absolutely fantastic. And I know this is probably overstated, but this is probably the best build I've created in my Let's Play world for a very long time. And that's a huge statement because I've created a lot of build in my Let's Play world. And this just looks super, super nice. The color gradient, all the different colors and everything like that just makes it look super nice. It just complements each other so well. And then we've also got a few custom trees here and there which also fit in with the theme of this build. But if you guys paid attention to the last episode, I actually stated that in today's episode, we're going to be working on the interior of this build. Because if you take a look inside, it's pretty plain, empty, and it's filled with a bunch of junk. Just a bed and an ender chest left in here. So we're going to spruce it up and make the inside look as great as the outside. Which of course is going to be a huge task, but I'm going to show you guys how I'm going to do that with a step-by-step -step process. And if we have a bit more time in today's episode towards the end, then we might even extend this pathway down this landscape over here, include a few more custom trees here and there, and then also add a few more details. That way we can have a better understanding of the landscape that we're working with and how we're going to continue working in this area. Anyway, without further ado, I think we should start off with this interior over here and get building. So the first thing I like to do when creating my interiors is to actually divide up what rooms we're going to make. So to make that a little easier, I'm just gonna pull out one of these boxes here, this cobblestone box, so that we have some materials to work with. So basically what I want to have in this build over here is a corridor I'm just running down this middle section here. And I think that'd be quite nice so that it can lead into multiple different rooms of the building. So if we just go ahead and quickly replace our pictures back up here, then we can actually let a little bit of light into the build. But if we just come over here and make a nice corridor, then we can kind of get a sense for how big this is going to be. So we're going to have a nice huge corridor entering the build over here, which I think is going to be quite nice. Actually, this is kind of off. I don't want this to be three blocks in width. I actually want it to be two blocks in width. So let's go ahead and make that a little smaller there. And I think that's a little better. It's just going to be a very small corridor that leads into the different rooms of the house. Now in this room, I want a bakery and I think like the actual main part of the bakery where all the bread is going to be, you know, made and everything like that. So I'm going to leave this as a big room altogether. But on this side over here, I want this to kind of be like, uh, kind of like a living room with a staircase lead leading on to the second floor. So what I'm going to do is actually put some sort of spider in between here where the staircase is going to start going up and then in this section over here i think a nice room will do very very well in this area so i think that's going to be quite nice now the next step of course is picking the build palette that we're going to be working with so in different rooms i like to use different blocks because of course that way the build can look unique on the inside and look super cozy so for the floor, it's usually some type of plank or some sort of wood. And I think for this build, we can use, you know, different types of planks in different areas. So for the bakery floor itself, I'm thinking about going for like a spruce floor. And then out here, I'm thinking about going for some sort of oak or birch just to make it a little lighter and differ from the actual baking area. And then one important thing that you must always remember when creating your interiors is to have double thick walls even if the space is super small like this place you're going to use double thick walls just to make it 10 times better trust me it makes all the difference so i'm thinking for this room over here i'm going to use some blue and purple terracotta i think that'd be a nice wallpaper and then over here maybe some white concrete and some maybe stripped oak logs will look nice as well but of course, I might change those around a little bit, maybe see which one works better. And then 
before you grab those materials as well. So without further ado, I'm gonna go ahead and leave this build for now and start gathering materials which I think will look nice for the interior. Of course, you guys, when you're making your own interior, you should grab materials you think will fit in nicely and kind of work with your own area. Of course, I want those blocks and stuff, but you guys can do anything you want that you think will fit your build. Anyway, so I'm going to go ahead and grab a few materials so that we can start building the interior itself. And then I'll see you guys back here in a couple of seconds for you guys. Okay, so now I'm flying in here with a bunch of newly gathered materials so that I can show you guys how I actually create my interiors properly using some blocks to demonstrate that. So if I just go ahead and place some of these shulker boxes down with my materials in them, then I can show you guys how I do them and then we can get straight into working on this first room. Now one important factor that you have to take into account is all these minor details around the room. You have to factor in uh, where the windows are going to be, where this huge window is going to be, other external factors like some doors and things like that, and where your entrance is going to be located. Now because of all that, this room is kind of peculiar. As you can see, this door is kind of off the ground one block higher. However, if I make the floor at that level, this window is going to look a bit weird. So what we're going to have in this room is actually a drop down from this corridor with two steps or three steps entering this room going down and then we're going to have a nice floor down here and then we're going to have another step that leads out through this back door over here and I think that's going to fit in very nicely and that way the windows look much nicer setting higher up than usual and making this room feel slightly more unique anyway like I said for this first room I'm going to be using some light blue terracotta and some blue terracotta originally I thought this was purple terracotta but I guess I'm wrong but I actually quite like this color over here then if you grab some dark oak planks like so, and some logs, we can create quite a nice room over here. So what I'm thinking is for the bottom part, we have some sort of nice dark oak trim with some planks over here. And I think that'd be quite nice. Of course, we're going to continue this all the way around just like so. And then I'm thinking we should alternate these colors and make it look quite nice. If you go like this, I think that's... Quite a nice wallpaper design if you actually just alternate it in a stripy pattern that is going to look quite cool and then of course I'm going to continue this all the way around and then update you guys on that later and there we go just like that I've gone ahead and continued this along this wall over here however you may have noticed that this side is completely empty and I didn't continue this texture all the way along this side over here and that's because one thing you have to take into account is how many rooms you're going to have side by side. So if you look over here, we're going to have the corridor running through this section over here. And because this room is going to have completely different wallpaper, it's going to look a little bit weird when we have two types of wallpaper on either side. So we're going to have some sort of different wallpaper on this side over here, just so that it looks a little bit more neat when you're walking through the corridor. And then other than that, of course, I've added a couple of stairs over here so that you have a nice entrance which is smooth into this area and I've made this only four blocks tall because that's the amount of space that you should be using in rooms like this. Anyway the next step is of course picking your what is this called again the floor color I couldn't English for a second there so basically you want to rip out your floor your pre-existing floor and fill it with something much nicer so in this instance I'm thinking spruce will look quite nice in this area and yeah, that fits in very nicely with this area. So I'm going to go ahead and fill in the rest of the space with Bruce so that it comes all together and looks quite nice. And very quickly, just like that, we've got a very nice room that's starting to come together. Of course, we don't have any of those details, but the actual room design looks very, very nice. And, you know, I have to say this is going to look really, really good. Now let's, of course, just fill in any empty gaps here and there. And also one thing to remember is that having different colored walls in different areas isn't actually always a bad thing over here i'm going to leave this as a stone just to kind of blend in with the outside when you're looking through the window however on the inside it still looks quite nice if you actually come back in through here it still kind of fits in with this wallpaper design so i think we're going to leave this outside part here with some stone anyway with all of that being said and done 
we're pretty much near to completion with the actual room itself. Now you may have noticed I've also added a stair here as well just so that you have a smoother entrance in and out of the back door. But now the next step of course is picking the type of ceiling you want. Now sometimes you want to use unique blocks for this which have cool bottom parts which might look very nice as a ceiling. But sometimes I just want to mix the ceiling with the floor color and just make it look nice. Sometimes having the same color just makes the room just a little bit more cozy and doesn't make it stand out and catch your glance everywhere you look. Sometimes that is the best option. So I'm just going to quickly go ahead and start building the ceiling up with some spruce planks and then we can go ahead and continue with the rest of this room. And there we go, we have a very nice looking room now if we just pop out the scaffolding over here. You can see it's nice and empty. Now of course we need to fill it up with a bunch of furniture and some details. But just before we do that, one tip I actually have for the ceiling is sometimes to have different depths and textures in it. Sometimes you should use different blocks and different heights. So something I'd like to do is pop out this section over here, this middle section, and then go ahead and fill it in with some slabs. Actually, let's pop that one back there. And then go ahead, grab a crafting cable and make some spruce slabs and fill the center in with those. Just so that it adds a little bit of height variation and so that it looks a little cooler. And I think we've got the right amount of slabs here. Just the perfect amount. There we go. And there we go. That just like that. I think the room looks a little better. And when you guys are making your own types of ceilings, you can use any sorts of different blocks. You can use trapdoors, anything like that, and use different types of patterns as well. You can use, of course, slabs on the outside, you know, stairs as well, and everything like that. Now I'm also going to change the ceiling up a little bit because I'm not a huge fan of it, but I'll do that off camera so that you guys don't have to witness it. Anyway, I'm going to go ahead and grab a few materials so that we can start building up some furniture in here and get this room fully completed. Ta-da! Just like that, I've gone ahead and filled this room up with furniture and it already looks 10 times better. And honestly, I know I said I was going to do everything step by step, but I wanted to show you guys all my furniture after it's been built because this video would get way too long and it would end up being 30 minutes long. But let me reassure you that this is only after 5 minutes of work and just fitting in furniture. Nothing else has been done to this room. Just putting in a couple of things here and there and then we get this product. And I think it looks quite nice. Of course you can see I've also changed up the ceiling like I said I would. Instead I've added beams across here just to give some support to the floor that's going to go on the second floor. And I think this looks quite nice as well. It also gives a bit of variation into the ceiling as well. And then I've gone ahead and added different pieces of furniture around here just so that it looks quite nice. So if we begin, we've got a nice little entryway into this room over here with some dark oak trap doors and stairs, which I think looks quite nice. We've got our drop down like we talked about. And then we come into the room. And I think the, you know, choice of furniture that we picked was quite nice. So because this is a bakery, of course, we need some sort of oven to cook, you know, the bread and wheat and all of that stuff in. So I've gone ahead and made uh, like a stove or oven thing. I honestly don't know what it is, but it's like some sort of furnace to cook all your food in back here using some sandstone. And I think that's quite nice. We've also got a composter so that you can put all your rubbish and your compost in after you've done making your bread. Then we've got a little kitchen island over here which I think is quite cute it also fills up the space as well otherwise this would be quite empty in the center and then we've got a nice long table that continues all the way around here in an L sort of shape and I think that's quite nice as well and then we've got our cakes over here and a few other details such as leaves and some flower pots and I think this comes together very very nicely and one tip people always say is when you're building your furniture or your interior designs is to always plan out your work. But if I'm being totally honest with you, I never do that. One thing I love to do when building my interiors is actually experimenting, placing blocks in different places and seeing how they look. That's one of the best ways to get the best results for your interiors. Anyway, after all those steps, this room is actually looking quite nice. You've got the beautiful furniture, the nice wallpaper, the clean ceiling look, 
and I think this has come together really really well. So if you guys follow my interior tips like I just did explaining how to build this room and then your interiors are also going to look absolutely amazing just like this. Anyway now we have to move on to the other parts of the house and you may have actually noticed I've gone ahead and built this corridor and you, you can see I've actually used some white concrete and some other blocks here like some dark oak dark oak wood it's stripped at the bottom and I think that's quite a nice wallpaper as well it's a bit simplistic but it does the job but now we've got to go ahead and build the interiors for all these rooms but I'm going to go ahead and do that off camera otherwise this video is going to take way too long anyway let's go ahead and start building this room over here and then I'll see you guys so that we can start building the second floor Alrighty, I've gone ahead and finished the remaining room over here and I think it looks quite nice. You may have also noticed that I've gone ahead and finished up this corridor and made it a little nicer. I've gone ahead and put a little uh, bookshelf at the end here and I think it looks quite nice. I've also finished off the ceiling over here with some beams and I think that looks quite nice. Now if we continue on into this room like I just went into a couple of seconds ago, I think the end product is pretty nice actually. So to begin with, we've got a nice little table set up over here with the carpet, which I think looks very nice. Some barrels in the wall over here, some extra storage, which I think looks quite nice. It breaks up the wall actually, which is a great thing in, you know, spacious rooms like this and where the walls are quite bland. So I think that's a very nice thing to have over there. We also have this shelf on the wall as well that has lots of greenery, which is great for plain rooms. And over here we've also got another bookshelf with some valves underneath and then we've got a little table over here with this dragon egg that i might move later on to a different location maybe upstairs to a better location but for now it's over here with a little lantern to provide some light and we've got a little nice plant in the corner which i think looks pretty cute and then we've also got some paintings to break up the wall as well and then we've also got a little doorway actually that goes underneath the stairs over here to like a little um you know kind of storage area which i think is quite nice actually it's pretty pretty nice in here but it's just a little extra space that you can use to put some barrels into it for your storage and i think it kind of fits in perfectly for such a small space and then of course i've gone ahead and made a staircase which leads onto the second floor of course though i haven't completed the second floor yet but that's what we're going to do in a second now and then at the top here, we also got this nice railing as well, so that you can look down onto the ground floor. And I think this is actually quite a nice little railing design. Of course, I've also added in some jungle trap doors and kind of made it like in a circular shape so that it kind of juts out a little bit. But that way, it looks 10 times better. You can see if you go down to the bottom here, if you just actually just jump off, you can see how, how much nicer it looks just having that little curve there and it kind of adds a bit of variation into the railing. So I think that looks quite nice. But anyway, the next step is to go ahead and build the rest of this interior for this upper section. And I'm thinking for the second floor, I'm going to have multiple rooms actually. First of all, I'm thinking of having just some sort of like common room over here as you come up the stairways into this central area, some sort of like another living room at the top level which i think will just fill up the space probably have some bookshelves here and there just kind of like a common room or some sort of library something like that and then we're gonna have two rooms on this side over here one door going into this area and another door going into this area and for this area i'm thinking about having some sort of main bedroom and on this side i don't know i'm going to experiment with some other things that we can do probably some sort of office space which i think is going to go very nicely into that area actually and then of course we might actually continue the stairway up this way or I might actually put some sort of bedroom into here, some sort of guest bedroom which I think will fit in nicely. But having said all that, we need to get building straight away so that we can actually get all of those things done and that we can actually complete this interior fully. So I'm going to go ahead and get straight on to working with the rest of this interior and I'll see you all straight after that. I swear, why does there have to be another creeper right outside my bakery? Every single time I'm trying to enter here, there's always some creeper just loitering outside, ready to, you know, attack me, sneak attack me. But this guy just chasing me, so hopefully I can enter 
without him actually following me inside because when I was actually building the interiors for this build here, a bunch of creepers actually went inside the build here and luckily they didn't explode but it was a very close call because they actually managed to fill this entire bottom interior up with themselves and I was super scared but luckily I managed to get out alive. However, we've actually finished the top of the interior over here and I think it looks pretty cool actually, pretty snazzy. So if you go upstairs here, you can see how well it looks and I think it's pretty amazing. Honestly, it's probably the best interior I've created and I'm really happy with this upstairs result. So basically, as you come up straight through the stairs over here, you've got this nice huge library section over here with a huge bookcase, but I think it looks very cool. It fits into this wall over here. That's one of the great things about having double thick walls is that this bookcase is actually aligned with this wall. And I think it looks very, very cool. You've also got some openings here and there. We've got some windows in the bookcase, which I think looks pretty nice. You can actually take a look outside, take a peek outside, which I think is pretty cool. And then you've got a lantern and a flower pot here with some paintings behind, which I never knew you could do. But I think it's a nice little detail, which I think looks very, very cool. And then, of course, with every single interior, barrels always work. So I've gone ahead and used barrels to line the bottom and the top. And I think that makes a very nice looking bookcase. And then again, like we said before, you've got this railing over here, which is very nice. It actually outlines this bookcase over here and the floor over here so that it doesn't feel too plain. I've also gone ahead and made a little change at the bottom over here. As you can see, I've added stairs and slabs so that this transition is a little smoother between the ceiling of the first floor and the floor of the second floor, which I think looks very nice. And also you can fully walk around this railing and grab books from every single side, which I think is very cool. Then of course, you've got a few other details. We've got a little table between these two doors over here on this end with a few decorations, which I think looks quite nice. We've got a painting to break up this wall over here. And then you've got a little cutout actually of this wall over here where we've got a little potted plant a little table with a lamp and some bushes and paintings which I think look very nice. It's actually a very nice cutout which fits this area pretty pretty well actually and it kind of just adds a little bit of variation into the wall design. Then over here we've also got a little shelf with two potted plants as well, two ferns and flower pots and then if you actually continue through this door over here you've actually got a little office space actually. Uh, it's kind of, it's, it's not pretty nice looking but I have to say it does the job you know like not not everyone's gonna come through this door but I think it looks not too bad but not too good either so you've got a little table with a flower pot and a little chair over here in front of this window so you can like sit here and work as you look outside this window you've got a nice view of the landscape actually my window distance is kind of low at the moment but you can still look outside once I turn it up and then you've actually got this ladder that leads on upstairs, which is the attic, actually. I made a little attic so that you can kind of store some goods. So I've gone ahead and started decorating. I haven't finished it yet, but I've gone ahead and started placing some barrels and some chests to feel, feel like a little attic space. I'm also going to use some note blocks and things like that just to add some crates in here. But I think this is quite a nice space. Of course, you can also use this for mass storage, which I think is actually perfect for this kind of area. And then it also kind of gives a nice aesthetic as well because you've got some beams in here and things like that which makes it actually feel like a proper attic. I also might add in some cobwebs to make it feel old but that's something for later on because this is kind of like a low priority kind of room because I can do this whenever I really want to. But anyway if you guys are going to make a build similar to mine you can of course use this area as an attic which I think fits it perfectly and you can use it for mass storage. Of course I've got a few barrels and chests left and I'm going to decorate the rest of this later, but I think it's a very nice, you know, thing to go into this area. But anyway, if we just continue down this ladder again, we can go ahead and check the other rooms out. So if you go out this door over here, you can see we've still got two doors left to explore. So if you just head on through the first door, we've actually got a little games room kind of thing. And I think it's pretty cool. So as you enter, you've got a nice carpet which fills up the floor, floor space, which I think is pretty nice and then straight away you've got a little table set up you've got a little table with a couple of chairs and actually I'm using a comparator to kind of you know a board game kind of thing because I think it's closest thing that you can get to Minecraft in, as a board game so it's kind of like a little table top board game like some sort of 
I don't know, game, but basically two people can sit on each chair and play with it somehow. I don't know, but it looks like a board game and it works really well over here. Then you've got a little table with the plant again, next to a painting and a window so you can look out. And then you've got a little shelf over here with a bunch of greenery. And if you turn around over here by this window setup over here, you've got a very nice looking cabinet actually. You've got some cartography tables and a Fletcher table. And I think that's very nice. You've also got a little painting and a flower pot with a little table setup. And then you've also got some bookshelves and some barrels, which always work for every single interior design that you're going to make. Anyway, with this room fully covered now, we can go ahead and explore the other room, which is actually the bedroom. And I think this room is actually very nice. So if you actually head on to here, we've got this room. And I think it's it's very small, but it does the job really. Because as you enter, you've got a nice table set up over here, which I think kind of complements this area, fits in very nicely. You've got a few things on as well. You've got some sea pickles to resemble some candles and a, a lantern here actually just to provide some light as well i've also improvised and made my own kind of random table here with a crafting table which i think is pretty small but it actually fits in this very area over here and just kind of provides some extra space then you've also got a shelf which is perfect for pretty much every wall that you make it, it allows you to put some greenery on top of it and some lantern to provide light like i just said over here and then to help break up any wall you can also use some paintings to make it feel less bland. I've also added in this little carpet down here as well, just to kind of break up the dark oak floor, which I think looks pretty cool as well. And then, of course, with every single bedroom, you need a bed setup. So, of course, you've got a huge master bed here with two beds, and the bed ends using some spruce signs. Then you've got a little cabinet on top of that using some barrels, and we've also added in some greenery as well. We've got some vines going down here which i think looks very nice and then you've got some leaves which that is connected to and i think that's it it kind of breaks it up you know you've got some greenery in there as well now and then over here we've also got a little bedside table with a potted plant and i think that looks very cool and you've also got a window so that you can look out of the bedroom you've also got the balcony over here so that you can go ahead and look at the great view that you have from the bedroom and you can even see a little custom tree over there which i think looks Pretty nice. Anyway, with all that said and done now, we're fully complete with the interior and I think it looks very, very cool actually. I'm, it's probably the best interior I've actually built and I'm really happy with the result. Even though I've already said that, it looks absolutely spectacular. And hopefully all my tips have also helped you guys in understanding how I build my interiors so that you guys can build your own interiors in your own special way. And of course, that will make it 10 times better. So I hope you all enjoyed this episode though because it's going to have to come to an end and i'm super sorry for those of you which wanted to see a time lapse this week unfortunately because we did interiors this episode we cannot fit in a time lapse because it's very hard to fit in a time lapse in this sort of video so hopefully next time we'll try and fit in a time lapse for those of you which enjoy it anyway i hope all of you guys enjoyed this episode and i'll see you all next time bye